Today on Studio G, the controversy over cattle roundups has come to an end. A look at what protesters had to say. If you put off your tax return, today is the last chance to file. What tax specialists recommend for students who wait until the last day? And human remains were found near SeaWorld Park, and we have the details. Studio G starts right now. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for having us in. I'm Ron Paul Gavino. And I'm Daphne Barreto. We start with breaking news. The man accused of killing three people at a Jewish community center and retirement complex in Kansas City has now been identified. 73-year-old Fraser Glenn crossed from Brook Brook booked into the jail on a primarily charge of first-degree murder. He is a known white supremacist and former KK leader. Federal prosecutors are still investigating whether this attack is a hate crime. Two weeks ago, Bunkerville, Nevada was just a small town that no one knew of. But after the Bureau of Land Management began roundups on Clive and Bundy's cattle, people from all over the country went to support his family. Reporter Christina Davies went to the protest site. Grandpa's cows are free! Everywhere across the world, they're watching what's going on. And we're, we stand for freedom. All is calm now, but a few days ago, this was an aggressive area. And despite the fact that people were armed with weapons, some parents still felt it was important to bring their children. They have to know the history of our country. They have to know what it is we're fighting for, and they have to know that we stand up against tyranny. What started over 20 years ago turned this area into a demonstration of our rights. This is our land. This is about upholding the Constitution. It's about upholding what America stands for. There were men and women walking around holding weapons or had weapons strapped to their legs and vests. I'm not afraid and I'm not going to be afraid and they're not going to make me scared. We are American citizens. We aren't afraid. The parents say that there is a lesson to be learned here and hope their children learn something valuable from this event. It's important that they see that um, this is how this is how we are free. The BLM has released Clive and Bunny's cattle, but there is still skepticism about the situation. Today it's the bunnies. What's tomorrow? It's not really about the cattle and the tortoise, it's about our freedoms. And if it's not Mr. Bundy today, it'll be me tomorrow. For Studio G, I'm Christina Davies. Thank you, Christina. The issue is still ongoing as to whether or not Clive and Bundy owes $1 million in grazing fees but he is happy that the cattle have been released and thanks the citizens of America for their help. There's a deadline looming over our heads. Tax returns are due Tuesday at midnight, and if you don't file, your returns will be late. And if you owe money, you will be penalized. Reporter Fabiola Marzano has the story. Fabi? And Ron Paul, Procrastinators may be penalized if they're not granted an extension, but thankfully tax preparation businesses such as Liberty Tax are working overtime to help those procrastinators file on time. Driving around Las Vegas Valley, you are bound to see someone dressed as the Statue of Liberty. These folks standing at a corner of the street holding a sign are reminding you that tax time is very near. Liberty Tax says the number of 36 customers a day has increased, but for procrastinators filing their tax return a day before, it's not as bad as people may think. I'm always on time. I always get it in on time. Regardless. Oh, sure. At the last minute. <laughs> I suggest, like, you guys shouldn't really procrastinate because it's really important not to owe the IRS anything. It's like no one likes to owe anybody anything. Everyone likes a clean slate and to start new, and it gives you a whole new year just to work and just make some money for your family and you could get like a nice car or something and just do good for your family. You better not be in no kind of system. Get your hell out of the system. That's what I've learned from it. You know, exclude yourself from the system. There's, you gotta get out of the system for as long as you're in the system, you got to pay, it's that simple. The deadline is Tuesday, so for those who haven't looked over their paperwork and haven't prepared anything. The penalties are anywhere from um, $500 for not filing and on top of that, the interest that you would owe. 
Liberty Tax Services are working extra hours to get everyone filed in. The General one is the W-2 or any 1099s from work. Tax specialist Mungia recommends students to bring their 1098-T, a form that shows how much tuition a student paid, which also estimates the tax return. The key is to get all your documents together before the deadline, and if you have any questions, reach for the nearest tax offices. Now remember, if you are prepared and you, should, you are better off, getting all those paperwork done and out of the way. Reporting from the newsroom, I'm Fabiola Marzano. Thank you so much, Fabiola. Um, so did you happen to file your taxes? Not yet. You have to get on it. You get so much money back. I know. I should get on it. I oh, haven't started. You worked last year, right? I did. Oh, see, you're missing out, dude. I know. I need you to get my to. money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, after the break, we'll give you the latest about what's happening around the country. Stay with us. Your community's farmer's market. Welcoming. Lively. Friendly. A place where neighbors and friends come together to celebrate their community. With over 50 vendors, organic, sustainable, fresh produce are available just for you. Support and buy local at Fresh 52. date. Welcome back. After giving birth to her newborn and leaving him in a toilet, a Pennsylvania woman has been found guilty of first-degree murder. Amanda Hine was attending an event in Northampton County, Pennsylvania when she went to the bathroom. There she gave birth to a baby. She then placed the newborn in a plastic bag and left him in a toilet tank. This was an act of omission where she allowed the child to die uh, did not get the child to a hospital because she intended not to have a baby. Hines said after she gave birth, she ripped out the umbilical cord and placed the baby in the toilet tank because she thought he was dead. She said the baby wasn't moving or breathing. Though the defense was able to spare Hines the death penalty, prosecutors were able to convince the jury to sentence Hines to life in prison. It made sense now, given the jury's verdict, that at least we spared her that going to a capital case a hearing. Life imprisonment without parole is, uh, is a tough sentence and she will think about that baby the rest of her life and uh, will die in prison. Hines struck a deal with the district attorney and gave up her right to an appeal to ensure she wouldn't face the de death penalty. Authorities in San Antonio, Texas have a mystery on their hands after the discovery of human remains near the SeaWorld Park theme, the sea World theme park during the weekend. According to officials, SeaWorld maintenance workers were in the wooded area of the park when they found what could possibly be a human body. The medical examiner now has the remains in custody for further investigation. Police say the remains have been in the area for several months and have no leads as to who this was or what happened to them. Uh, at this point, we don't have any identification on the, on the uh, remains. Uh, there's no indication who it might be or what he may have been doing there on the property. It just makes me a little bit uncomfortable with all here and all this. That I don't, they don't know what is it, how old is it, or, you know, it, it's just a little scary. I would like to know who, who that was, if they were even reported missing or anything. Like, you know, you feel bad for whoever that was, if that actually happened to someone. Though police claim that SeaWorld visitors wouldn't have noticed the remains or the investigation, residents in the area are still worried that the identity of this person may never be known. Just across the street from the theme park sits a neighborhood full of San Antonio residents who wonder who this person could possibly be. Medical examiners are still trying to identify the body while authorities try to piece together what, whether a crime was committed. This case continues to remain under investigation. In other news, a British sailor who fell overboard during an around-the-world yacht race is safe. It took Andrew Taylor's crew 90 minutes to find him. Taylor fell off the boat in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. The rough waters made it difficult for his crew to find him. Luckily, Taylor was wearing a fluorescent life jacket. His crew was able to see him in the water. 
I'm under no illusion. I'm a, I'm a pretty lucky boy to be here and I'm very, very glad to be in San Francisco. I need to say thank you to a lot of these guys behind me for the work that they put in for the search and rescue operation. There are some key points that we can learn from this. It's not a good way to learn, believe me. Uh, I'm a lucky boy. I'm very, very glad to be here and I'm looking forward to spending a few days in San Francisco and getting back on the boat and finishing the race as soon as I possibly can. Taylor and his crew came from China. Their journey around the world started in London. From San Francisco, they will travel through the Panama Canal to New York. They will eventually make their way back to London. The entire trip takes about nine months. Taylor was taken to the hospital on a stretcher. His injured leg was partially wrapped when he got off the boat. There is no word yet on the status of Taylor's injuries. Still to come on Studio G, a look at your local weather forecast. And later, Monica sits down with two UNLV engineering students who won the Nevada Business Plan Competition. Stay with us. The Miles Low Midweek Show. I specialize in underground local hip-hop music as well as your top hits. In the first hour, we play your top hits. Second hour, other local legends that you guys may have never heard of. But I want my listeners to realize that there's more good music than what you hear on the radio. Just Diversify your ears a little bit. I love it with all my heart. It's your boy Miles Lowe from the Miles Lowe Midweek Show. You can check my show out from therebelhd2.com. Participation in Greek fraternity and sorority life at UNLV can provide an experience like no other. With benefits including supportive friends, leadership and career opportunities, and community service. Um, Greek life at UNLV is really great. It's a good way to network and meet new people from all over the place. We got academics and we're all about that culture. So we encompass everything all around and we're, we're out here and we're trying to better ourselves and try to make it better and let's just make it all better all together. With the weather warming up, it was the perfect weekend for Wet n Wild to reopen its gates for its second season and just in time for spring break. Wet n Wild will have more days, longer hours, and season passes are already on sale. Spring break specials will end this Friday. Now, I'm really excited to go swimming, but Alvin, let me know. How's the weather going to look? The weather's going to look great. In fact, if we just look today at our weather, we see today is 69 degrees in the dew point, and it's 14 degrees. But if we just want to keep looking on over here, and our high today is 69 and 58 degrees, which is really different from where our low usually is, where it's 55 and 78 degrees. If we just want to keep looking on right over here, 69 in Las Vegas and 50 in Gallup, right down over there, and we have 56 in Tonopah. But let's not worry about here. Let's look around the nation. In fact, if we see around the nation, we can see there is this great rain that's going on in Louisiana and Mississippi. There's even a possibility of tornado watches around the area. And we see right here, there's this cold front that's pushing its way to the east coast and it's going to bring much colder weather to that area of the nation. In fact, if we want to look at the weather, we see Atlanta, 58 degrees, and New York in 63 degrees. But let's bring it back to home. Let's see what's home about. And we want to just look at the home. We can see right over here that our seven-day forecast, there's 80 degrees, 81, 83, 85, 86, and 88. In fact, we just have so much of this great weather that can even go to when wild. In fact, if we just want to look right now at a video that we have, which is video of this blood moon, which takes place because an eclipse has gone on and just taken place. It's going to be happening tonight, around midnight to 1, p 1 a.m. So if you just want to check it out, it's not very often. In fact, you won't be able to see this. We'll be right back with science and technology after this break. And just stay tuned to enjoy the weather and just have a great time at when wild. Back to the desk. Thank you very much. Scribecast Radio Show. We talk to new artists, major artists, the best artists. We talk about hip hop, R&B, anything else, hot topics. This is awesomeness. Play some new hip hop. Second hour, we typically play new R&B. Freaking amazing. I'm Scribe Cash. I'm the best. What's up, it's your girl Scribe Cash. This is the Scribe Cash radio show. You can listen to me on therebelhd2.com. I'm Christian FGY. Kaylin Hype. And I'm Jay Luna. And we're Ill Vibe here. It's an underground hip hop show here at UNLV where we focus on making the hip hop culture in uh, the Las Vegas Valley more prevalent and just making people more aware of uh, up and coming underground hip hop artists. Basically, we play what we like. Um, it's really as simple as that. Uh, most of the stuff we like are our hits, so it's both. On KUND HD2, Las Vegas. You're going to hear these stories. 
stories that count that Combox Radio refuses to cover. My show is the King Louie Show, so you know, no one really wants to hear about the last bombing that happened in Baghdad. So we do the stories that matter, like K-Rev having a seizure at, at mid-court, or um, fast-paced show with lots of fast-paced music, especially punk rock and stories that hit hard. King Louie here, uh, host of the King Louie Show on the Rebel HD2, and I am here every Friday noon to 2. Hello, I'm Donald Woods with this Monday Science and Technology News. Today's segment focuses on the technological barriers for spreading ideas on an international platform Recently, YouTube.com has been receiving political attention on the international scale as one campaign has been created to unrestrict it in a Middle Eastern nation. Attention for its message to the Pakistani government. To unblock YouTube. YouTube was blocked in Pakistan after a video titled The Innocence of Muslims, considered highly offensive by many, was uploaded and sparked violent protests across the Muslim world in 2012. And here in the UNLV campus community are Pakistani natives who have been able to experience the possibilities with YouTube here in the U.S. and also have experienced the ban at home. Dr. Haroon Stephen of the engineering school at UNLV is a Pakistan native and has seen the music video. I think it was a very interesting uh, way to talk about the desire uh, through a rap song, how they want the YouTube ban uh, removed uh, in Pakistan. For Dr. Steven, YouTube is a very important tool to disseminate knowledge to his students. I, I create tutorials, I create um, uh, educational material that I post on a YouTube channel. For me, it kind of increases my contact time with the students. I don't have to just depend upon a classroom lecture uh, to give them uh, information. I can, I'm, I'm providing them information offline. And from that aspect, he sees YouTube as playing a very important role. All of these YouTube channels that I have created and many other people around the world have created uh, provide so much useful information that students in Pakistan can benefit from. So having that ban uh, removed would definitely help those students as well. Despite the protests, Dr. Steven doesn't see the YouTube ban as a restriction in Pakistan. For many Pakistanis are accessing the video site regardless there in Pakistan, they have found other ways to see YouTube. People are still posting videos on YouTube. Um, I personally watch uh, YouTube videos from Pakistan all the time. There are a lot of proxy servers around the world that are conveying the same information. And while in Pakistan on a computer, you can still watch YouTube. So having an official ban is not really doing any benefit in terms of pre preventing people from watching it. And we have to point out that Pakistan hasn't been the only country to block YouTube. In fact, other countries around the world have had their own situation with blocking access based on video messages that have been deemed inappropriate content. Some of them have unblocked the video site while some others still have a band in place. That's all the science and technology news I have for this Monday. I'm Donald Woods. Now we'll send it over to Monica Cran with our interview segment. Thanks, Donald. Here we are joining us today is Greg Friesmuth and Ginger Zank. They are high-tech startup students um, that just won the Nevada Business uh, Plan Competition. So tell me a little bit about the competition. So the competition is um, how it's called Dominic Morocco, um, Southern Nevada Business Plan Competition, and it's solicited about um, 20 to 30, uh, I think, applicants with that was in this year in submitting your business plan ideas, you know, how, what kind of business you want, um, and basically how, how you plan to, you know, to take it um, the, to implementation. Um, and we were, uh, we went through the semifinalists, the finalists, and we end up being the grand prize winner of the competition. Okay, and, and what did you guys um, do? What did you implement? Go ahead. So our, um, our business plan is, is a UAV manufacturing business. So we, uh, so we developed some technology, sort of being engineering students here at, at UNLV. 
and uh, we developed some cool platforms that uh, is really a booming industry right now. So we uh, developed this business plan around creating indoor uh, UAVs, uh, in education and research um, applications that, uh, you know, so they can fly around inside of buildings and they can also be tested and researched on. Uh, so we're manufacturing and building these as part of our business plan. Yeah, so we're basically drone makers and uh, these are flying robots that, you know, we think it's a really cutting edge technology and we're UNLV engineering students about to graduate and we're starting up this business. That's real. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's very real. I understand that um, it's very popular with the aerial photography um, aspect of drones. What? What's the most important thing about your guys' drones? So uh, our, ours is just, uh, they're, they're safe for indoor environments. They have some specialized proprietary technology that's uh, very high tech uh, that a lot of people, that other people out there don't have. Uh, so we're, we're developing this basic commercial solution uh, out there on the market that uh, it hasn't been developed yet and, and we really have a good shot at, at being the primary player for this, this market. So people are mostly like really f uh, familiar with using drones for aerial photography, but you know a lot of people actually don't know there's uh, tons of other really like industrial application like to inspect power plants, you know, inside the power plant like for pipe leak, uh, indoor radiation detection. We call it like 3D, so in the dangerous, dirty, and dull environment, you know, where you don't want to uh, endanger a human, you know, a personnel, uh, where you can just send in one of these drones, a flying robot, to uh, to do the job for us for a human. And do you think that um, it's going to change like the media with aerial photography or how it's going to change the security? Oh yeah, definitely. You know, right now if you want to aerial photography, you have to use a helicopter, which are, are kind of unsafe and they have all sorts of restrictions to them. You know, a, a guy with his, a thing that fits in his trunk can come and do aerial photography, get the same quality footage that uh, uh, helicopters used to ha need to do, and uh, it's re it's really sort of innovative technology for for media and for video imaging processing and things like that. Okay, and so, um, what what kind of restrictions do you think that they're going to put on your kind of drones? So, uh, our 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 business is primarily focused on the indoor environment, which the FAA does not regulate. So we we actually kind of set our own regulations, which is very advantageous for us as a business. However, the outdoor market has a, a uh, the FAA uh, is really kind of just said, oh, don't don't use drones right now until we figure out the rules. And Nevada was picked as one of six states in, in the United States to be the test site to figure out commercial uh, integration with the, the airspace. So uh, that's that's really advantageous for Nevada because it will really help the, the industry grow here uh, versus, you know, other states where that technology is kind of already around, but they can't, they can't utilize it and they can't test it like we can. I wish we had more time to talk about drones. That's so interesting. Thank you guys for coming in today and um, we'll be right after this break. I want this place to be a place that they feel safe, it's secure, a place where they get inspired. So many times we, we kind of get complacent in our everyday life, transforming lives in the community from the inside out. I've been in fitness my whole life, but now tying that in now in my spiritual walk, it's been just amazing. Some people may want to run a marathon. Some may want to just get off their asthma inhaler. Exercising and moving our bodies, I think it's, uh, you know, we say if you don't use it, you lose it. <laughs> Collegiate DECA promotes personal and professional development through competitive events, community involvement, and leadership development. I joined DECA because I wanted to get out of my comfort zone. So I got to meet people, network, and definitely work on my public speaking. To join DECA, it's a very simple process. You have to pay a $25 membership fee. You can either come to our next meeting, our website, which is unlvdeca.co.vu. We're open to all majors who are interested in business, finance, or hospitality related fields. Welcome back. A new study has been released that a woman should be aware of. Um, reporter Kyle King gives us the details. I'm here with the local health report. Women, women, women. A new study shows that women have a higher chance to develop eye diseases over men. Let's check out what the doctor has to say. For those who have not had an eye exam, just realize there are a lot of eye diseases out there and 
virtually all of them can be slowed or sometimes even prevented if we can do an annual eye exam and pick those conditions up. According to the group Prevent Blindness America, women more often than men have leading eye diseases. In fact, females are more likely to be visually impaired or blind. Recent polls show that only 9% of women are aware of vision loss. There's precautions to follow to help prevent vision loss. There are many things that you can do to help prevent these diseases. For one thing, eat a healthy diet. Throw away the fast food. And for second, um, just live your life. Try to exercise and be as healthy as possible. There are ways to overcome these diseases. In addition to a healthy diet, women, uh, try avoiding UV rays that can damage your eyes. Try to avoid smoking cigarettes. And if you notice that your vision is starting to blur up, visit your family doctor. For Studio G, I'm Kyle King. Thank you, Kyle, for showing us how to protect our vision. For more information about the study, you can visit preventblindness.org. Countries from all around the world came together at UNLV to celebrate the cultural diversity of the community. Reporter Troy Fosgate gives us more. Different nationalities, cultural music, diverse food, all a part of UNLV's Festival of Communities. It's great. you got different kind of organizations, different communities from different places coming here, setting up booths. Everybody else can come here, everybody from the public, from Vegas, they can come here and enjoy the events and find out what's going on in their city outside of their own little worlds. I like when cultures mix and you don't change your culture or anything, but everybody comes together with a little bit of what they have to offer. Cultural awareness connects people together and it starts at the place of origin. Young people in Las Vegas don't know enough about their own country, let alone the rest of the world. It needs to start in your own backyard. They need to learn about their own country and they need to learn who we are, where we came from, and keep our traditions alive. The best thing is to just kind of become aware again, like through education. Here there's so many different uh, type of cultures being promoted. So today's a really great learning tool for you to become more aware of other cultures that might not necessarily be yours. Personal experiences at the Festival of Communities draws a vivid picture to what the event is all about. My favorite experience has been just connecting with everybody. Also, to be able to do this kind of stuff, artistic things, and um, I don't know, we don't have any boundaries. For Studio G, I'm Troy Fosgate. Thank you so much, Troy. The festival features more than 180 booths and attracts more than 8,000 people to the campus. We hope to see the festival grow even bigger next year. You know, I'm really excited for next year's because I, I honestly didn't hear about the festival, but now that I saw that, I'm definitely going to go next year. Me neither. I really wanted to go. I came, I was on campus for just for mm. like a minute and I saw it and I was really tempted to go. <laughs> I saw those drums and I'm like, I really wanted to, you know, play yeah, with them. Yeah, and they have some, did you see the color, colorful flowers? Yeah, and so the food. Pretty. Oh, the yeah, food. Yeah, the food. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for having us in. Uh, we hope to see you tomorrow for another edition of Studio G. Have a great day, Las Vegas.